What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game Kenny for real. MLK Day edition, man. You know basically what it is. You wake up, depending on what your sleep schedule is like, and then there's games all day long. So no matter what, I knew I could turn on the TV and watch some basketball. Now, I'm going to say I did pick and choose. I did pick and choose which games I thought would be worth watching. And to keep it a buck, I shot like 100%. The games that I didn't watch didn't turn out to look like good games. But before we get into today's slate and talk about everything, of course, I want to honor Martin Luther King Jr. for all his great work throughout his lifetime. It goes without saying that I am super appreciative of his work and the work of other civil rights activists during his time period. Of course, none of this is possible without the work of Dr. King. So may he rest in peace. And and the basketball NBA community put together a great slate of games on his day. All right. Let's get to the one that everybody's here to hear me talk about, the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Brooklyn Nets. When you thought the Brooklyn Nets couldn't look any better from their first appearance, here they are winning another game. But this game is not against some Orlando Magic team that is losing like four starters. This is against one of the best teams in the league. And they came out and they performed. This felt like a playoff game from the very beginning and especially in that fourth quarter. I just wish, I wish that there was like fans in a crowd. And I think that the TV um, cast does a good job of making it feel like an, an NBA game with, with the sound effects and everything. Um, but I had to turn all that off because the call was absolutely terrible, but I don't want to go there. This felt like a playoff game from the very beginning. The best part about it for, for what the Brooklyn Nets did was that DeAndre Jordan had his best game pretty much of the season. Um, and, and people were tweeting at me, Kenny, I thought you said DeAndre Jordan's bad. He has been bad. But that don't mean he was always, you know what I'm saying? He had a really good game today, and that was one of the reasons they were able to put together a win. Another reason is because, well, James Harden and Kevin Durant are two of the best at what they do. It goes without saying. The, the one thing that I saw somebody ask me on Twitter, which I didn't, I didn't answer if you're watching this video, my apologies, because I did want to pose a question to the audience here on the call game um, audience. Is Joe Harris the best shooter James Harden has ever played with. Because I was just, and off the top of my head, I was just thinking, you know, I, I guess I could have went through the rosters, and I'm more specifically talking about his time in Houston, because y'all know that he's running that five-out five offense for a lot of it. He had P.J. Tucker, he had Gerald Green, he had, he had Robert Covington at the last year. So he always had good shooters, but has he ever had a shooter of Joe Harris's caliber? And off the top of my head, I think the only guy I can think of was Ryan Anderson, but they weren't even like a, championship quality team Ryan Anderson was playing with so I think this is the best shooter all of that saying I think this is the best shooter that James Harden has ever had in this team and Joe Harris again I told y'all people are going to start realizing that Joe Harris is more than just a catch and shoot guy he does so much more on the floor um it does help when when Jeff Green is basically not missing and I think the only miss he had was late in the shot clock one second he threw a shot up and it was an air ball so he was incredible of course Kevin Durant doing incredible things and the best thing about this is in the first half James Harden had Six turnovers, and I don't think he had a single turnover in that second half. So we were talking about his turnovers in that first game against Orlando, and it's starting to cut down. And he made DeAndre Jordan look like a quality NBA player. And that was the one thing I was hoping for in that first game. And, you know, team chemistry, again, they haven't even practiced together yet. Still, they haven't practiced together yet. Still, they just rolling the balls out like, go to work. And they are going to work. This is a scary team, man. They're a very scary team. Now, though the, the Milwaukee Bucks did lose this game, there's nothing Milwaukee Bucks fans should be worried about whatsoever. Because you watch this game, the, let's be honest, the reason they lost this game is because they just didn't shoot the ball well. It's very, very simple. There was no strategical changes. I mean, the last shot attempt, this is a play that Coach Bud has drawn up endless amount of times when they need a basket at the end of the game, and it, it very rarely works, even though the Chris Middleton shot was, was halfway down and, and Giannis was open under the rim. Maybe if they would have had that extra three seconds, things would have been different. E either way, either way, this is not a game the Bucks fans should hold their heads because they were super competitive in this one without them actually shooting the ball well. It's it's getting to the point of kind of scary. Like, I I'm starting to get the sample size for some players, right? You know, when players start off struggling and start off the season, there's four or five games. I'm like, they're in a slump. They'll get it together. I'm getting kind of afraid that DJ Augustine may not be the player that they wanted him to be when they signed him. It's rough, bro. 0 for 7 tonight specifically, but it's not just about tonight. It's about his entire season so far. He hasn't provided the value off the bench that I thought he would have provided when they signed him. So that's a little thing. But but I, I do enjoy watching both of these two teams, man. They have so between these two teams, they have so many great isolation players. From James Harden to Kevin Durant to Chris Middleton. They're all, I would say, that's three of the top 10 isolation players in the league, and they were going at it, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It was a great game on national TV. A game that I watched parts of but not the full thing of, it was the Atlanta Hawks beating the, the Timberwolves. 
It's one of the games I opted not to watch the full thing. But what I was watching, what I can say is DeAndre Hunter looks really, really good this season. Um, and that, that's that's very good. That's very promising because he could be a – he's like a long-term – person for this team you know like when you have so many lottery picks in the role like the Atlanta Hawks have when you're on a rebuild team let's be honest all of them are not going to turn out to be on your team by the end of their rookie contract and not get that second contract the way DeAndre Hunter has played this season he looks like a long-term player that can play well alongside Trey Young we got a maybe not so great Trey Young game again but he did get to the free throw line more and that's where his game uh, thrives and for the Timberwolves it is very very rough and I know that the Warriors especially they got the win today you know they're in playoff contention and they still got the Minnesota Timberwolves picked as top three protected. And at this point, I think that they are tied for the worst team in the league. Record-wise, they can't defend a thing, and their offense sucks too. So and that, you got to look back on that trade and be like, was it worth giving up two first-round picks to get D'Angelo Russell? Now, I know they couldn't predict it, that Carthony Towns was going to break his hand or that he was going to catch the virus. But I guess even with them two – first of all, the sample size of them playing together has been super small over the season that they've been together. So – I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, Conde Towns comes back and eventually you don't end up giving up a pick. You know what I'm saying? Ugh, it's, it's, it is kind of rough. Um, the Spurs and the Trailblazers game, I watched this entire game, but there's not much to say about it. The Trailblazers are still missing so many players, and the Spurs win by committee. I can't say Devin Vassell looked very, very good today, and this was like my first time watching one of the Spurs games from start to end with no interruptions. So it was a good win from them, a quality win. I think they have four to five players with 20-plus points, and a lot of them being their vets. Now, another nationally televised game, the Grizzlies. Oh, my God, the Grizzlies. Now, the last time I had an episode, and y'all know this is all off the top of the head, so I'll be forgetting some stuff. Maybe I should be writing notes throughout when I'm watching these games. I wanted to show a lot of love to, to Xavier Tillman, and I still don't know if it's X Xavier Tillman or X X Xavier Tillman. Somebody in the comment section let me know. Do I pronounce the X? Because I've heard it both ways. I literally have heard it both ways. When I listen to the Grizzlies call is one way. When I listen, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, what a game what a game bro the Grizzlies are must watch TV bro they was close to must watch TV when John Morant was down and now John Morant is back the play he made to find I forget who exactly was in the corner because again this game happened hours ago the play that he made the hang time is ridiculous ridiculous to get that shot off in the corner this team is just so nice and Xavier Tillman to be basically like the oldest rookie in the draft class he's come in got his first career start and he looked really good over the past couple games Dylan Brooks shot one for 10 but I promise you his impact was there because defensively he was all in all in Devin Booker's back Devin Booker couldn't do a damn thing today and a lot of that is due to Dylan Brooks now like I said with DJ Augustine um I'm, you're starting to get a feel for some of these players and whether or not it's slumps and whether or not it's this or that. So far this season, Devin Booker hasn't been Devin Booker. And I'm not just looking at this game where he's 5 for 21 and he was dreadful. I just meant throughout the entire season that he has not looked like Devin Booker just yet. And I know that has a lot to do with, with probably Chris Paul coming in here because, I mean, that dramatically changes some things about the team. Chris Paul at his old age, he completely changes the way you run your team of basketball. And, and maybe, I mean, for the better because, again, this team is in the playoff race right now. Without him, they kind of were, but not really. At his old age, he's not running gun up and down the court anymore. And the Phoenix Suns last year were a top 10 pace. And this year, they're like bottom three. So I know there's some adjustments because, like, Mikael Bridges runs the floor amazing. Devin Booker runs the floor amazing. DeAndre Aiden is amazing in, in the, the court, open court. But they haven't really been able to run like that because of Chris Paul is in their point guard. So I think that a lot of Devin Booker struggle, struggles this season because he's still playing solidly. You know what I'm saying? He just ain't been as good as last year what made him an all-star. He'd probably be an all-star still this year because they're a playoff team right now. But you get what I'm saying. He just hasn't been as good this year as last year. And this game particularly was, was really, really hard for him because there were so many plays down the stretch where – uh, Devin Booker was like, I, I got to do this for us. When DeAndre Aiden was having probably one of his best games of the season, he had a play. I don't remember. Maybe it was Tyus Jones was on his back in the post. And instead of getting the ball to him, Devin Booker chucked up a shot. Like, just plays like that. Like, like DeAndre Aiden is a guy that should be getting a lot more touches than what he did in this game specifically, especially with him having as good of a game he did, especially with the way the Memphis Grizzlies were defending him. He had a lot of situations where the smaller defender was on his back. And I know he ain't a body bruiser like some of the other bigs in the league, but if it's Tyus Jones on a seven-footer, bro, that's an easy, easy basket. But this is going to come with chemistry. This is with the, It's going to come with them learning how to play together. I'm still very high on this team um a close game just a very close game bro the Memphis Grizzlies are running out a team full of players that 
are kind of like young castaways, and it's working, and it's absolutely working. Uh, the Raptors get another win, slowly chipping away, but the best thing about this game is not just the win, but they clamp Luka. And when I say they, I'm talking about OG, I'm talking about Stan, the stamina, Stan the man is what I'm just going to always call him. They clamped up Luka, and Luka was playing a back-to-back where he's uh, put up 30-point triple-double against the Bulls last night, so maybe he was just tired, but they played amazing defense on Luka, and obviously if you can stop Luka, you can stop the Dallas Mavericks. Um, when it comes to the Miami Heat game, Bam Adebayo had one of his better games of the season, which is great. Um, Kendrick Nunn had a good game when I was watching, and it was one more player. Mo Harkless had a good game. And what what's sad about this game particularly is Blake Griffin. He just – I don't want to say he's going out, man. I just, not that, I just don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it, bro. Blake Griffin has just been one of my favorite players over the past decade or so since he's been drafted. And to see where he is right now is, is kind of concerning. It just is. He hasn't put together a game so far this year. And I think I was talking about it in one of the very first episodes that, like, so far this season, he's been a spot-up shooter, basically. He's not doing Blake Griffin-type things. He the, the last time he was really good, when they had that playoff run, when it was, like, all on his back. Think about, like, two years ago, I think it was, when he led them to the playoffs and he couldn't really play in the playoffs because he was injured when they went against the Bucks. He did everything for that team. He was the point power forward. Passing, rebounding, defending, scoring, and he has just lost all of that. So I hope, I hope, I hope this ain't what we got. Again, he has talked about how later in his career he wanted to compete for a championship, and obviously on his team he's not really doing that. So maybe that's in his psyche. But bro, I do not want to see him go out like this. And right now it is, it is rough. It is rough. Um, is that the last game? Oh no, no, no! The Bulls got to win. It was, it was weird to see Victor Depo in his new jersey, but he played very, very well. Um, the Bulls are gonna have to defend. They can't outscore all the good teams. They, they won't be, be able to outscore the good teams. And that's kind of what we saw when they went on L.A. trip. They can compete. They can compete with them, but they're not going to be able to outscore them. They're going to have to defend something eventually this season if bubble playoff team is on the horizon for Bulls fans. They got to learn how to defend. Um, they give them 120 points tonight, and I think they're bottom three defense right now. So they need to – shout out to Zach Levine for scoring a bunch of points. And lastly, the Warriors get their win on the Lakers. I think there was a five to six, seven-minute stretch – Five to six, seven minute stretch where the Lakers couldn't get a field goal. They got to the free throw line a few times, but they just couldn't get a field goal. And that shot by Stephen Curry was so beautiful. I got to give a lot of love to Kelly Oubre. This is one of his better games of the season. But one, one thing that people fail to realize is that even when Kelly Oubre was struggling to shoot when he was shooting 4% from three, what is he shooting now? He is shooting better than 4%. But when he was shooting 4% from three, People had to realize that he was still getting in people's – he's shooting tw- – oh, okay, he's not – 19% is the exact number. Oh, ouch. Um, he plays just with this intensity, right? He's not a great defender. He's not necessarily a smart defender either, but he plays with this intensity that can get under, under people's skins. He gets the technical foul for blowing a kiss. He gets the, the inbound steal where he's pointing. Like, he plays with this intensity, and today they needed that intensity. And then the Steph Curry shot was so magnificent. Draymond Green, if somehow you're watching this video, I would love to talk again that was not highlight-related, just me and you on a call game show, because I can listen to Draymond Green talk basketball for hours and hours on end. There are not many people in the NBA that I feel like I can just learn – Everything about basketball from Draymond Green is that guy. So every time he is mic'd up, I'm listening. So I just can't imagine how many gems he can drop for not just me, but for the audience out there. So Draymond, hit hit a brother up. It could be remotely like the first time we met each other. And the last possession for the Lakers is very weird. Uh, they get it with like 20-something seconds on the clock. They I'm thinking that they about to go no timeout. And then they, they run a play that just doesn't really work. LeBron gives it to Dennis Schroeder, then like runs away from the ball completely. They get a timeout with a second to go. And LeBron does get a good look out of the timeout. But they end up losing this game. Um, but similar to what I said with with the Bucks loss, it's nothing to be concerned about Lakers fans. Obviously, y'all have been playing great all season. One loss is not not going to change any of that. But for the Warriors, this is a very, very big win after a couple game losing streak. All right, that's it, man. I need to get back. I need to get my Chris Paul poster up or thing back up, man. It feels so bare in here. You know what I'm saying? If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. I'll see y'all maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Call the game.